Alright, hello everyone. Welcome to Pokemon Puzzle Challenge for the Game Boy Color. Today we're going to be having a race between two of the top runners in the Puzzle Week series. We have Cards of the Heart and we have FFR Pro 21. They're going to be running the intense mode of Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. And uh, I believe it's going to be just me running the commentary on this game. So for uh, those of you guys who are familiar with the Puzzle League series, this is a Puzzle League game. But unlike uh, previous entries, such as Tetris Attack and Pokemon Puzzle League, where both you and the computer have their own screens. In Pokemon Puzzle Challenge, uh, due to the limited computing power of the Game Boy Color, obviously, the AI is does not have their own screen, but instead they have a health bar, and they send over scripted attacks, basically. And uh, I think we're just gonna wait for them to count down. Uh, I should say that <laughs> my name is Tayman, and I run Pokemon Puzzle League. I run S-Hard in that game. I've dabbled a little bit in Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. Isn't, isn't as much my cup of tea, but still very enjoyable as a Puzzle League game as they all are. And uh, this game... I don't know if I'm supposed to be counting these guys down or not. <laughs> so, uh, I'm just gonna wait for them to get started here. Uh, I am actually not in the voice chat with them, but it looks like they're ready. So, we will count them down in three, two, one, go. Just trying to get... Got a few wires crossed. We will get things... Okay. Okay, there there we go. Uh, so, it, so, as I mentioned, in Pokemon Puzzle Challenge, you are actually uh, knocking down an opponent's health bar. And the intense mode, honestly, is probably one of the most challenging categories in any puzzle puzzly game. In the intense mode, the opponents are very brutal. They're going to be sending over these giant garbage blocks, and they have very high health bars. And so what... It, in intense mode, it's basically impossible to send enough damage in one chain. So what you'll see cards in FFR Pro doing is they'll have one big initial chain, and then they will put themselves in a good position to chain, to start clearing the garbage that the AI sends over. And then they'll get a second big chain off of that, and then try to just knock them down. And ideally, ideally it'll take two attacks to take them down, but it doesn't quite work uh, to plan all the time. That's due to the healing mechanic in this game. So, when uh, when the AI gets low, low enough, I think it's around 50%, I don't know what the exact number is, but when they get below 50% health, they can actually heal a random amount of their health back. So, what FFR Pro and cards are going to try to do is they want their initial attack to send just around 
half health. They don't want to then do too much damage to them. They're gonna try to knock down their health to around half and then take out the second half in a second chain so they don't get the opportunity to heal. And that's really difficult. We do know there, there is like exact damage values that chains do, but it's really hard to, you can't really calculate that in the middle of a run. And uh, I'm gonna do my best to keep up with chat as best I can. There's a lot to explain here. You'll notice that we are playing with scroll on. And scroll on just means you can raise the stack while you're chaining. And that's uh, fairly unique within a Puzzle League game. Uh, most games, while you're clearing blocks or while you're chaining, like the stack is locked. You can't raise it. So basically when you're chaining, you can only chain with as many blocks as you have on the field at a given time. But with scroll on, you can actually raise the stack while you're chaining. That gives you many more blocks to work with, and because they can extend their chains longer, it's actually going to make these opponents much easier to take down. And uh, now that I've laid out the basics, I can try to actually focus what these... Uh, what FFR Pro and cards are up to. So it looks like Cards is a stage ahead on going against, I believe it was Jasmine in Gen 2. And uh, FFR Pro is going against the Ghost Guy. This game, of course, is based off of the second gen of the Pokemon series. So right now we see Cards. He sent over his initial attack, and now he's going to try to chain off the garbage long enough to knock out Steelix's health in one fair go. You can see why that scroll on is really helpful, that he was able to do a lot more damage, and he's able to take out Steelix in 46 seconds. So that was a very... that's, that's about where you want to be in the early game when the opponents aren't as tough and don't have as much health. Uh, you want to get them down in probably between 40 and 50 seconds, ideally. And then when you get to the later stages and the Elite Four, you're probably looking for closer to between a minute and a minute 20, roughly. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like FFR Pro has gone out of commission. We will try to get that back up as soon as possible. But uh, Cards is kind of doing a sweet lag chain there. Lag chains are just basically when you have offsetting chains like happening like just uh, spaced apart a little bit. So that is very swaggy. Of course, it's not a real puzzly run if there's not swag. So... Uh, Card of the Heart has actually put in a lot of work into this game. I know he was, I think it was a couple years ago, he was really grinding intense mode, and there's a lot more RNG involved because of the healing mechanic, as I mentioned. If that did not exist, then it would basically just be just how fast can you do enough chaining and comboing to knock down their health bar. So it is a grind in true Puzzle League fashion. When they made this game in, it's like the early 2000s or something, they were like, you know what? We need to make life harder for the, the people speedrunning this game in 20 years. So let's add a healing mechanic. And I think they did that in order to simulate the real gym battles where they can use a hyper potion or a full restore and it's just as annoying in this game as it is in the main Pokemon game. But it is what it is. It's it's definitely a much more unique entry in the Puzzle League series. The so cards is on a really good pace here.
he is working to take down, I believe Claire was the gym leader for the 8th gym. But the thing that makes Intent so difficult is that the AI is going to be sending massive garbage blocks on you. You can see they have something called an attack bar, and it's like an invisible meter that counts down in the background. And once their attack bar fills up, they can start sending attacks. And usually that fills up pretty quick on intense mode, and they're gonna start sending over a lot of crap at you. So you have to be prepared for that massive garbage block to come down and to start chaining off of that. Uh, <laughs> cards raising, uh, having a massive chain there with the assistance of the scroll on. and. Scroll on is really fun, but it's not really the main category for intense. Usually you'd have scroll off. So you can see that cards took down Jinx in about 34 seconds. And with scroll off, which is the more traditional playstyle, that would probably take at least a minute. So God, he is he's doing really well here. And like I said, because you are able to give yourself so much ammo while you're chaining, you can almost, you can theoretically extend your chain indefinitely, because the AI's garbage is not going to drop until you are done chaining. So with scroll on, you could, I believe theoretically, and someone might have to correct me on this, you could theoretically chain out to just knock them out in one fell swoop. Thing, a lot of action going on when you have scroll on and you have all these garbage blocks falling down. You can, when you clear the garbage, you, see you clear the garbage by getting a, a clear on the blocks right next to it. And for chain garbage blocks, those big thick ones, you only clear one line at a time and they turn into blocks. So you can chain off of that and if, if, depending on the state of your play field, you can have these clears all over. You see cards going for, I think it's a, it's a few faint, it's like two or three frame trick of getting a lag chain off of the garbage blocks. Where normally, like those would clear at the same time, but you can swap right as it falls in and it'll count as a separate chain. So here we see cards going on the initial attack. And he is in a good position right now. Oh, I guess that garbage block fell in the middle of the chain. So perhaps I was mistaken when I said that the game waits for you to be done with your chaining in that regard. But he's going to uh, con carry the chain into a clear and then try to get a massive chain off of these garbage blocks. Hit on top is has a tad more than his health left. So, oh, unfortunately he drops that chain. Is that it's not gonna quite be enough. He's gonna have to try to send some more right before he heals. And there's a pretty good chance he's gonna heal here. He sends a nine combo and that's gonna do it on Hitmontop. I believe Hitmontop has one of the highest, uh, one of the highest health bars in the game. And uh, one little nuance that's important to note here is that uh, chain damage is sent when the chain is done, which makes sense because the game doesn't know like how much damage you're doing off the of chains until the chain's finished. But combo garbage or combo damage is sent right away. So if I'm if I have a five combo or a six combo in my chain it's going to send right away to the opponent. So if they are, if the opponent is really low on health and you want to try to knock them down before they heal, you'll try to look for some quick combos which will send their damage like right away compared to chains which don't send until you're done with the whole thing. So there goes Murkrow 
at 45 seconds. Looks like FFR Pro is just a little over a stage behind, and actually Card is going into the final stage here. Uh, I don't know what his PB is <laughs> for a scroll off, but this has been pretty insane so far. And uh, it looks like Card is probably gonna take down or take this fight. You know, FFR Pro is going to work on Hitmon Top. Also with a very respectable time. Like I cannot I cannot stress how difficult intense mode is. Because you always have to be on your feet. Like there is as soon as you get get done with that initial chain, you're just gonna have just massive chungus falling down on you. And one thing that also makes it difficult is the fact that you are not guaranteed to get a clear on the garbage box. And what I mean by that is, let's say that beneath the garbage block, as it's clearing, you have, like, two hearts. Uh, in most puzzly games, it would give you a heart to make sure you could have a clear. But in Pokemon Puzzle Challenge, you are not guaranteed to get a clear off of the garbage. And it looks like that is time for cards. So, <laughs> so time uh, happens right as soon as the cursor disappears on Dragonite. So GG's for cards. That was a very strong run. And you can see how having the scroll on makes it a lot more consistent because you basically get a lot of extra ammo in the form of those blocks being able to raise a stack whenever you want during the middle of chains. So we will wait for FFR Pro to finish up here. I remember I had a lot of fun with this game when, god I think I was like 9 or 10. But I could not beat intense mode. It is so difficult, and I, I was good at the game. But you just need a ridiculous amount of stamina. So, GG's to cards. I hope I was able to explain enough about this game. <laughs> it went by really fast, and the, the scroll on makes it go even faster. As you see FFR Pro going into the final stage, trying to take down the Dragon Master Lance. Unfortunately, didn't really send a, a lot initially, only about a third of the damage. So he's gonna probably try to get... Yeah, he's, he's gonna... Like, got an accidental chain up there, which kind of ruined his plans. I think Dragonite is in heal range, unfortunately. But FFR Pro is going to extend this out as fast as uh, much as he can. And he's going up to 11. And that's probably going to be enough. And that's time for FFR Pro. So GG's for both cards and FFR Pro. And, uh, is there anything that the, the host wants to say, or? I mean, I think their gameplay speaks for itself. Yeah, it's, it's so mesmerizing, these puzzle games. That's why I enjoy running them and watching <laughs> puzzle speedruns. It's, it's so captivating. It's so hard to put into words. Uh, please go follow FFR Pro and Cards of the Heart. Um, I don't know. I, I can drop their Twitch links in the chat. And also want to plug the Puzzle General community. We are actually having a Pokemon Puzzle League, which is the Nintendo 64 version of this game. We're having a Pokemon Puzzle League tournament next month uh, on the Puzzle General uh, tw Twitch channel. So that's going to have some of the best runners in the world competing 
in that tournament. So that's going to be really hype to watch. So really recommend that you go follow the Puzzle General Twitch. I will drop these links in the chat when I have a chance. But uh, yeah, that's been Pokemon Puzzle Challenge for the Game Boy Color. And really hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for having us Midwest Speed Fest. Good luck with the rest of the marathon.